dear students welcome back to the second semester bsc physics class in this session we shall discuss about the concept of entropy change of entropy in a reversible and irreversible cycles we know that any matter can change from solid to liquid state and liquid to gaseous state in this transition of the states there will be some change in the randomness of the system we know that in solid state the atoms and molecules are well arranged when compared to liquid or gas in a liquid state the molecules can move freely when compared to solids and in gaseous state the molecules are much more free to move in a random manner when compared to both solid and liquid state here this randomness or the disorderness can be measured which is known as entropy hence the definition of entropy is it is a measure of degree of disorderness or randomness of the system any spontaneous process is always accompanied by an increase in disorder or randomness of the system in all such processes there occurs an increase of entropy dear students you have come across about the state variables such as temperature pressure and volume etc in the previous discussions about kinetic theory as well as the thermodynamics these state variables can be measured directly but entropy is another such a special kind of state variable which cannot be measured but the change in entropy can be measured in the figure you can observe that the three states of matter are shown the arrangement of the molecules can be observed in solids the molecules are well arranged when compared to liquid and gas and in liquid some randomness is seen when compared to solids in gas state the molecules are more in a random manner compared to solid as well as liquid this happens because when solids absorb some heat the internal energy changes and the molecules will get more kinetic energy and they will be more free to move and this randomness increases if we further heat the matter and the transition takes place from liquid to solid sorry liquid to gaseous state hence this measure of the randomness is known as entropy in the figure the arrow mark shows that delta s which is a measure of the change in entropy is greater than 0 when the transition is taking place from solid to liquid and liquid to gas direction if you move in a reverse direction the entropy change delta s will be less than 0 from gas to liquid and liquid to solid this means 
the randomness increases as we move from solid to liquid and liquid to gas but the randomness decreases when we move from gas to so liquid and the liquid to solid so now i think you have understood the concept of entropy it is a measure of the randomness of the system the word entropy was first used by clausius entropy is an extensive property and has a unit joule per kelvin clausius introduced the entropy concept first in 1854 it is a word uh, taken from the greek the word entropy a greek word meaning transformation clausius felt the need of the variable entropy in addition to volume pressure temperature and internal energy etc to describe the condition of a working substance completely entropy remains constant in an adiabatic process because in an adiabatic process there is no exchange of heat takes place between the system and the surroundings so whenever there is a change of heat takes place then only there will be the change in entropy takes place now let us consider if a system absorbs an amount of heat dq at constant temperature t during a process during a reversible process then the entropy of the system increases by ds it is because in an in a reversible process the entropy measurement can be done and uh, we can see how the entropy can be defined mathematically it can be written as ds is equal to dq by t joules per kelvin and if a system rejects a quantity of heat dq then its entropy decreases by ds so here the inference is that in a reversible process if the amount of heat is given to the system then entropy of the system is increased if the system rejects the heat that means if the heat is withdrawn from the system then the entropy decreases now if a system is taken in reversible process from state 1 to state 2 then the total change in entropy of the system is given by integration of ds from state 1 to state 2 which is equal to integration of dq by t from state 1 to state 2 that will be equal to s2 minus s1 where s2 minus s1 shows the change in entropy hence from this expression what we come to know that the change in entropy can be measured by integrating the change in entropy from one state to another state now we shall discuss about the change in entropy in a reversible cycle according to the theorem of clausius it states that the change in entropy in a closed reversible cycle process is zero now we shall consider a reversible process that means a reversible engine works by absorbing some amount of heat and by giving some amount of heat 
so during this absorption and rejection of heat there will be some work done that will be represented by a complete cycle which is shown in the figure so this reversible cycle comprises of four parts there are two isothermal processes and two adiabatic processes in the figure the cycle abcd represents a carnot cycle carnot cycle is a reversible cycle we have studied about the carnot cycle the working of a carnot engine and and the representation of the working of a carnot engine in a graphical representation which is known as a carnot cycle let us recall a carnot cycle now the curves ab and cd are the two isothermals and also the curves bc and da are the two adiabatic curves during the isothermal process there is a change in entropy but during adiabatic process there is no change in entropy because in an isothermal process there is absorption of the heat and we get isothermal expansion and there is a change in volume of the system the working substance will increase the volume during the isothermal compression also there will be rejection of the heat takes place and there will be a decrease of the volume since in the isothermal process the heat exchange is taking place therefore there is a change in entropy also takes place but during the adiabatic process there is no exchange of heat takes place hence in the absence of the involvement of heat the change in entropy is also absent now during the isothermal process ab as shown in the curve ab the increase or gain in entropy of the system is equal to q1 by t1 so in the isothermal process from a to b q1 amount of heat is absorbed at the temperature t1 therefore the change in entropy ds can be given by the integration of ds from a to b is equal to q1 by t1 now the change in entropy due to the adiabatic process along the curve bc is zero that is represented mathematically as integration from b to c ds is equal to zero similarly during the isothermal process along cd there is a decrease or loss in entropy of the system since amount of heat q2 is released at a temperature t2 so this loss in entropy or decrease in entropy is given by q2 by t2 that is integration of ds from c to d is equal to minus q2 by t2 this negative sign represents the loss in entropy or the decrease in entropy of the system hence the change in entropy due to the adiabatic process along da is also zero so in these four expressions we have calculated the change in entropy along the four parts of the reversible cycle of a carnot cycle now we shall add all these and we get the change in entropy over the complete cycle let us see that the net change in entropy of the system in one cycle is given by integration of ds is equal to integration of ds from a to b plus integration of 
ds from b to c plus integration of ds from c to d plus integration of ds from d to a. We get the result integration of ds is equal to q1 by t1 minus q2 by t2. But we know that for a reversible cycle q1 by t1 is equal to q2 by t2. Hence the change in entropy ds in a complete cycle that means the net change in entropy of the system in one cycle is equal to 0. Hence the change in entropy of the system in a reversible cycle is 0. In other words we can say the loss in entropy of the source is equal to gain in entropy of the sink in a reversible cycle. Now let us discuss about the change in entropy in an irreversible cycle. For this we shall consider the efficiency of the heat engine. Let the heat engine may be reversible or irreversible. Its efficiency can be represented as eta is equal to 1 minus q2 by q1 where q1 and q2 are the heat absorbed from the source and heat rejected to the sink. We know that efficiency is a ratio of the work done divided by the amount of heat absorbed. That can be represented in this manner that is eta is equal to 1 minus q2 by q1. And the same efficiency in case of a Carnot's heat engine which is a reversible engine that is given by eta dash is equal to 1 minus T2 by T1 where T1 and T2 are the temperatures of source and sink. In the previous sessions we have proved the Carnot's theorem and we have understood what is a Carnot theorem. The Carnot theorem says that efficiency of a reversible Carnot engine is maximum. That means no other heat engine will have an efficiency which is equal to Carnot engine if it is not a reversible heat engine. Hence the efficiency of a reversible Carnot engine is maximum that is eta dash is greater than or equal to eta from the above assumptions. So 1 minus T2 by T1 is greater than or equal to 1 minus Q2 by Q1. That implies Q2 by Q1 greater than or equal to T2 by T1. In turn we can write this as Q2 by T2 minus Q1 by T1 is greater than or equal to 0. This represents the loss in entropy of the source minus the gain in entropy of the sink is greater than or equal to 0 which is a positive quantity. Hence delta S the change in entropy is a positive quantity that is it is greater than or equal to 0. This equation says according to this equation delta S greater than or equal to 0 we can say that the entropy is always increasing in a in an irreversible process. Hence the entropy of a system increases in an irreversible process we can conclude. This is called the law of increase of entropy.